I'm glad so many people got to be here today for the climax of our annual pledge campaign, Celebration Sunday. Over the past couple of years, we've made a lot of pitches for money, especially to make this move happen. I thank you for bearing with, with us. I thank you for your incredible generosity, and I think we're all pretty thrilled with the results of our space. Talking about a building is actually a little bit easier than talking about funding our daily budget operations. For the building, we had blueprints to show folks and we had something to come visit, something very tangible. Talking about our day-to-day -day operations is less concrete. The overall mission of a liberal religious community, our purpose for existing is a little ambiguous. Our mission is to create, to reconnect with the sacred, and to love our neighbors and ourselves more fully. It's a really broad mission. There are a million different ways to reconnect with the sacred and to love our neighbors and ourselves more fully. I have a few personal dreams for what that might look like at Tapestry in the next couple of years. They may connect with some of you, and some of you may think they're completely off the wall, but I'll share them anyway. I dream of us strengthening our network to support the youngest and the oldest in our community. Not being able to get yourself to tapestry on Sundays shouldn't be a barrier to being a part of this community. We can do a better job of staying connected with tapestry folks who are no longer able to get themselves here on Sundays. And just about every week, I'm reminded of the challenges of raising children in this wild, mobile world where grandparents are often hundreds or thousands of miles away. We have a unique opportunity to support these families in our area. I dream of Tapestry being a little bolder in our stances on issues of social justice. Part of our mission statement talks about being a leader in South Orange County, and I think we can gain some skills and some confidence to lead more boldly. And I believe that we're also learning to step out of the spotlight sometimes. We're learning to be accomplices to people of color, people with disabilities, LGBT people, and people who are poor. We're learning to be accomplices as they lead us in the struggle for our mutual liberation. Because sometimes our best efforts are following someone else's lead. And I dream of a time when every member of this community, every one of you, will feel confident and proud to tell a stranger or a friend what Unitarian Universalism means to you. I'm not talking about evangelizing. I'm talking about actually feeling confident in the vocabulary of your own faith. Now, knowing what you're about as a faith community is really helpful, but it's not easy in 2019. It's clear that faith communities don't just happen like they did in the 1960s. People work too much, and this world is too secular to assume that vibrant faith communities just happen. Times have changed. It takes strategy and work. And for tapestry in particular, we've gone through a big change this year. For three years, we worked really hard together to get into this building. It was a big, audacious goal, and we did it with beautiful results. Three months after moving in, it leaves us with a bit of a question. Now what? In a strange turn of events, Friends of Orange County detainees is in a kind of similar situation of asking, now what? 
If you've been around tapestry for long, you've heard of our big social justice effort, Friends of Orange County Detainees. For seven years, this organization has sent volunteers to visit people in immigration detention. For the past three years or so, they've also helped them after they were released from detention to get a safe place to sleep for a night or two, a meal, some clean clothes, and a safe journey on their way. Over that time, FOCD has visited at least 8,000 people in detention. I'm sorry, made at least 8,000 visits to people in detention and helped hundreds of people along their way. If you follow the Orange County news about immigration, you have heard that the Board of Supervisors has decided to end their contract with ICE. That means that in just a few months, the roughly 1,000 people in detention that this organization has been visiting will move to other states. There's a lot of different interpretation of what that means for immigrants. Some of it good, some of it bad. The ramifications aren't completely clear. What is clear is that our organization that has built steadily over the past seven years will have its mission pulled out from under it in just a few months. A few of the leaders of this group have taken the work as a full-time job, and I mean full-time, 40 hours plus a week of hard-time work. They've been accredited as legal advocates for people in court. On a more institutional level, we're wondering what to do with 100 plus highly dedicated volunteers and a chunk of money and accumulation of skills and infrastructure over these years. When the news of closing detention centers broke last week, I went into my usual mode of frantically trying to solve a problem. I started thinking about how we might shift our mission, maybe working with people in a prison or maybe immigrants outside of detention. I started thinking of the meetings that we needed to have with the leaders and the volunteers to see what they were willing to do. Maybe we just need to dissolve and send these people on to follow their passion. Maybe giving our financial assets to bond people out so they can have a better chance. And I started calling people. I called my friends to find out what happens when these centers close. I called my friends who did nonprofit management to figure out how to shift a mission that quickly. Where are we going? What do we do next? Who has answers for me? I need a plan. After a couple of days of that kind of intensity, I remembered how this whole thing started. The dramatic success of the organization, I fully believe, comes from the roots of how it was founded. Seven years ago, some tapestry members got really curious about immigration. So they went through a study group for quite a while. Through that study, they became aware of the conditions that drive people to immigrate to the United States. They became aware of the really broken system and the near impossibility of doing that immigration legally. Their hearts were cracked open to this issue. And most people, when they look at something of that scale, issues like homelessness or racism or military industrial complex, they look at those big problems and get overwhelmed. Instead of getting overwhelmed or giving up, these women with freshly opened eyes and hearts started looking around for the right opportunity. They looked at the gifts that they had to bring to the table and they looked for particular opportunities where a reasonable amount of work could make a real impact. In that time of paying attention to the possibilities, they learned that, wow, there are a thousand people in our backyard in detention. As they learned about those detention centers, they realized visiting people, simply recognizing their human dignity and worth, just visiting could make a difference. 
My frantic couple of days of looking for a solution couldn't have been more different from the foundation of the organization and its success. I saw a problem that needed solving quickly. I saw challenge and loss and crisis. Seven years ago, those wise women took their opened hearts and minds and looked for an opportunity where a little compassion could change someone's world. It took patience for them and keeping an eye out for opportunity for goodness. The typical pledge campaign sermon is a task of painting a picture of the coming year, what we're going to do with our financial resources. So at first, when faced with this sermon, I started down that same frantic problem-solving road. What's the capacity of our building? How many people can we seat in here? What are the demographics of the surrounding neighborhood? I started thinking of prison ministry and homeless folks and the LGBT community and caring for our pagans and our Buddhists in the congregation and starting a UU summer day camp. I want us to be relevant. I want us to make a difference for our neighbors. What are we going to do? What's the plan? Who has the answers? Well, how about this? Instead of diving into more frenetic problem solving, I want to invite you, invite us, to take a cue from those wise women who first gathered to form Friends of Orange County detainees. Their heart was broken open, and they began slowly to notice opportunities for good guided not by problems to be solved, they paid attention to their gifts and when a little compassion could make a big difference. So for the first time in quite a while, I don't have a blueprint for this coming year. But together, we're going to play, pay close attention to our strengths and to the spots where we might bring about more good in the world. And not knowing exactly what to do, not knowing what's next, is a little uncomfortable. It feels like setting out on a real journey, not just traveling to a known destination, but a journey to explore about ourselves and the world around us. And it takes concerted effort to open our eyes and notice possibilities. Seeing the good and imagining even more good is a discipline for us to cultivate together. I don't know exactly where we're going this year, but I'm very, very glad that we are going together. Amen. Amen.